Thank you for joining us for the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria's Family Sunday. I am April Caverhill, the Family Sunday Coordinator. Now first, I want to begin by gratefully acknowledging that the AGGV is located on the traditional territories of the McClungan speaking people, today known as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. We are most fortunate to be able to live and play and make art together on these lands. Now today, we are proud to be collaborating with Pacific Opera Victoria. So be prepared to hear some very big voices. Our program celebrates this time of year around solstice when nights are long, days are short, and we're going to discover how sound and color and light and dark can all interact to make beautiful art and music. While you're watching and participating, perhaps you can think about what you most enjoy about December and what you're looking forward to as the days now start to grow longer and lighter. So let's settle in and get ready to listen and create with Pacific Opera Victoria. Hello, my name is Rebecca Haas, and I'm the Director of Community Engagement for Pacific Opera Victoria. And I'm so delighted to be joining you today as part of Family Sunday with the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. When I spoke to the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria, they had an idea about solstice, and they wondered if the opera wanted to contribute and create a video that would give some activities and some ways to think about solstice that would connect our two worlds, visual art and art in music. And it was an easy decision for me because of course, when I think about sound, I do think about color. So I think we're quite connected. Today, we're going to talk about the winter solstice and the time of darkness and the time of light. And we're going to look for those colors of darkness and light in the voice and in the music that I'm going to share with you today. So winter solstice is the 21st of December in most of the Northern Hemisphere. And what we celebrate is not so much that that is the longest night of the year. So it's the day with the most amount of darkness out of all the days of the year, but rather we celebrate that after the 21st, the light returns. And if you think about light and the longer days, perhaps like me, you think about summer or even springtime when the flowers come up and the sun is warm on our hands and on our faces and we feel brighter often and lighter because of the light. The darkness and the 21st and the longest day of the year that has the most amount of darkness that can be seen as a time to be quiet, like at nighttime when we're getting ready for bed, where we reflect, where we think, or maybe we do quiet activities as compared to when we're out playing and running in the sunshine. So today I'm going to ask you and whoever's with you watching this video to play some games and draw some pictures and think about light and dark, not just what we see with the sun and the moon, but what we hear if we listen to music with that same idea in mind. Now, I do want to start with color because I think that's the thing we go to first. So if you have maybe nearby some crayons or pencil crayons or paints, now would be a good time to go and get those and a piece of paper. I actually have mine with me. I brought out, I have pencil crayons. I like to do a little drawing in my spare time. And so I'm going to ask you to get your pencil crayon or your crayons and then just a blank sheet of paper. You'll need probably two or three of these to start off with. And I want to ask you, if I had you create a picture of darkness, what would you draw? So you can pause this video now if you like, and you can choose from your crayons or pencil crayons and create a picture of what is darkness. I'll just wait here.
Have you done it? I'm going to show you what I drew. When I think of darkness, I pretty much go right to the color black. I could have used brown, I suppose, or a dark blue, or I could have drawn a picture of nighttime with stars in the sky and the moon. So then we get a sense of the darkness because we have little bits of light peeking through. But often night looks like this. <laughs> it's just completely dark and we can't see anything. Now, what if I asked you to draw a picture of light? You can pause the video again if you like and see what you might draw for light. The thing we're going to get more of after December 21st. You can draw it now and I'll wait right here. Did you pause? Well, if you've done your picture, I've done mine. This time, I went for the sun. So I went for an image. When I think about light, I am thinking about longer days and more sunshine. So there's my sun. But you could have thought maybe also, I drew a light bulb. <laughs> That's another source of light. That's how we keep it light in our house at night when it's dark outside. So like me, perhaps you found that was a pretty easy challenge. If you have to draw darkness, we pretty much agree what that looks like. And if we have to draw light, we agree what that looks like too. But what about in music? Can a sound be dark? Can a sound be light? I can tell you, as someone who sang for most of her life, that is one of the ways that singers describe the sound they make. So what if I asked you to make a dark sound? What sound would you make? If I have to make a dark sound, I'm gonna sing something that's kind of low in my voice. So let me see, maybe, ah. That for me is kind of a dark, low sound. If I was going to sing something light, what sound might I make? What sound would you make if you had to make something sound light or bright? Well, if dark was low, maybe bright, is higher. I could make little short little sounds kind of like the chickadees in the yard. Those are kind of my lighter, brighter, higher sounds. So sound can be bright if it's high. It can be dark when it's low. But how else might we hear the color of sound. Sometimes it's about the tempo. Tempo is a musical word that means fast or slow or in between. It's the speed at which a piece of music goes. Often music that is lighter will be faster. Kind of like when I made my little chickadee sound. So, but what about for dark sounds? Dark sounds and low sounds, sounds that we describe that might feel more like nighttime, are often slower sounds and slower songs. So those are some things you can look for. What I'd like to do now is I'm actually going to share a piece of music with you. And in this video, you will see a wonderful performer. His name is Micah Schroeder, and he's a baritone. So he has a lower male voice, and he's going to be singing a song that is a symbol of a darker and lower voiced song. So this might feel a little more like when we think about nighttime, a dark color. Think about what I said, how fast is it? Is it fast or slow? It might be slow because it's darker. And you might also see ways that you feel the darkness of the music. You could play with your face. When you listen to the song, do you feel like smiling? Or do you feel like sad face? You might think about your body. Does it want to dance and move around? Or does it feel like it's slow? Like we're going through maybe jello or pudding. You can also, if you really enjoy the drawing exercise, you can get out your notepad and your pencils or your crayons, and you could pick colors that you hear in the music and sketch and draw with those. All of these things are possible. 
So I'm going to let you listen to Micah and see what you come up with in your time with this song. What did you think of that song? Pretty dark, right? Pretty slow tempo and that baritone voice, pretty dark. What a fun thing to explore in music. So I want us to do another one. We've done one now that's dark. What about doing one that's light? This time I have a female singer for you. Her name is Charlotte Siegel. Charlotte is a soprano and that's the highest of the female voices. And she has a rich, rich voice. But in this song, she moves it pretty quickly. This song is a bright song. See if you can hear it. The song is in Italian, but she's singing about a beautiful bunch of jewels that she wishes were hers. It is known as the jewel aria. And maybe you can hear the sparkle and the light that reflects off all the jewels in this song when you listen to her sing it. It does have lots of high notes, which we said is a sign of brightness, a sign of sunshine and light. It also has a pretty fast tempo. Something else we've said actually is an indicator of brightness and light. Now it's your choice again. You can move around your house this way if you like listening to the music and see how it makes you want to feel. You might really notice when she sings high notes, does it make you want to reach way up high? <laughs> Or do you want to sing along? You can also, once again, get out your pencil crayons and your book and you can draw to the music and see what shows up because intuitively inside, you know that this is a lighter, brighter song. So listen to our next performer and enjoy the Jewel Aria. And I'll see you afterwards. Hi, I'm Charlotte Siegel and this is Jerome de Los Santos and I'll be singing Marguerite's Jewel Song from Gounod's Thoughts. Thank you. 
Could you see all the jewels that Charlotte was singing about? It's pretty amazing, that piece of music, full of light. So now we're going to explore light in music in a slightly different way. You're getting used to hearing it. You can hear it in the tempo, the speed that the music goes. You can hear it in the color of the voice. We've talked about voices that are bright and voices that are dark. And now we're gonna play with a flashlight. <laughs> so hopefully you have got one prepared or you can find one in your house, but this is my flashlight. And I'm gonna use my flashlight for another game. So this next piece of music I'm going to play you is another bright song and it has um, fast tempo, uh, the voice is bright. It's a song called Helft mir ihr Schwestern, which is in German, and it means help me you sisters. And in this song, the singer talks about getting ready for her wedding day. She's so excited and she's getting her hair braided and she's putting on her beautiful dress and the future looks bright, bright and sunny. So to play with light this time, you may have noticed my background has changed. I made myself a little blanket fort. Now mine's pretty basic. This um, involves three of my kitchen chairs and I think I have four blankets involved. But what I'm trying to create is a dark space. Now, it might be easier for you just to go into the bathroom and close the door if your bathroom doesn't have a window, or maybe with a kitchen table, 
um, and some blankets or just put yourself under a blanket. But you want somewhere dark because we're gonna take our flashlight and this time when you listen to the music, I want you to use the flashlight beam to go the speed of the music you're hearing. So it's sort of like being a conductor because conductors wave batons, but we're gonna wave flashlights. And, and if you're in a dark room, you can actually then see the light of the music by the tempo and the design you make with your flashlight beam. I thought this would be great fun. Maybe it's just because I've always wanted to make a blanket fort in my living room and I'm getting a little old for it. All right, so I'm gonna go into my blanket fort and you're gonna to get to listen to Simran Clare. She's a mezzo-soprano, so that's a medium female voice, but it's still gonna sound pretty high and she's going to sing to us all about her excitement about getting ready for a wedding day and uh, get into your blanket fort or your dark space and conduct along with your flashlight beam and I'll see you after the video. So how did you do with your flashlight in the dark room? It's kind of a fun way to see the music, I think, and not something we normally get to do. So I have one more song that's another sort of light and bright song. But this time, and we're still gonna use our flashlight and our blanket for it, I want you to do something slightly different. This song is called Something's Coming, and it's from a show called West Side Story. And in this song, it's in English, but the tenor, the highest of the male voices, is nervous and hoping that something good is coming. Now, you're gonna hear two different kinds of ways of hearing light and bright. His voice is bright and high, but he's going to sing in long, slower phrases. But the piano, the piano is like the beating of our heart. It's beating so fast because we're so excited. We talked about how when things are fast, it's often a sign of lightness, brightness, hope, and in this case, a little bit of nervousness. So enjoy this time in your blanket fort. You can choose to either conduct along with the speed of the singer's voice who's hoping and wanting. If you think about when you hope and want for something, you tend to reach out for it. There's a lot of reaching out for it in this song. Or you can go with the piano and it's going to be, I think, a lot of jagged lines with our flashlight. So once more into our blanket fort and I will see you after you listen to this song, Something's Coming by Caden Forsberg. Like 
got a feeling there's a miracle too gonna come true coming to me could it be yes it could something's coming something good if i can wait something's coming i don't know what it is but it is gonna be great with a click with a shock phone will tingle Just by holding still, it'll be there. Come on, something, come on in, don't be shy. Need a guy, pull up a chair. Maybe tonight, maybe tonight. Welcome back. Did you have fun with your flashlight and your blanket fort? It's a great game and you can do it with all kinds of music. So I'm gonna leave that to you and you can play other kinds of music later and maybe play with your flashlight in your blanket fort. I have one more song I wanna share. And this song is by a Métis composer. His name is Ian Cousson. And this is from an opera called Louis Riel about the Métis peoples. This song is a lullaby. It's sung by another soprano, which is the higher of the female voices, and her name is Simone Osborne. I chose this song, I think because rather than it being about light and dark, I think this is a great song to listen to on the solstice, because it's a lullaby. And so it's all about when you sit down before you go to bed, and you think about your day and you hope for a good tomorrow. That's what the singer sings about. As a mother, she wishes for all these beautiful and amazing and wonderful things for her baby. But what she really also wants is for the baby to go to sleep. So in this music, and we have an orchestra this time, you can hear the sense of it's time to go to bed, which is a time of darkness, because it's time to go to sleep. So when you listen to this one, you can watch it if you like, and you can draw what comes to your mind as you listen to what it is to go to sleep and lullabies and bedtime. Or maybe you want to get one of your favorite blankets. And maybe you just want to have a little lay down, snuggle up in your blanket, close your eyes. You know, one of the wonderful things about solstice and the longest night of the year is that you get to snuggle into your warm blanket and have beautiful sleep and wonderful dreams. So here is Simone Osborne with an aria, a lullaby, from the opera Riel. I'll see you after the lullaby if you don't fall asleep. I might. <laughs>
Welcome back. Did you have a little nap? I confess that I did. And I thought about star-filled nights and full moons. Sort of a lovely thing, long dark nights. Mm, but I also love it when the sun comes back and we have more daylight and more time to play outside, more time to walk and wander and hike and all kinds of wonderful things. I have one more offer for you as something you can do with all the videos that are inside of this Family Sunday video. The last exercise I wanna to offer to you, and you can go back and you can do this with any one of the videos that are light or dark. I encourage you now that you've played with your body and how your face might feel in a sad song or in a happy song, or your body posture if you're reaching up for high notes or if you're really low and dark for low notes. I want to encourage you to go back to any of the songs and create your own creature of light or creature of dark. And you can just move around your house that way or around the room. And maybe you want to decide who's going to be what and surprise each other. Maybe you ask someone to guess, am I being a light creature or a dark creature? Or maybe you just wanna all move around and dance together in your creature shapes. And of course, as I've indicated many times in this, you can draw pictures of the creature of light or the creature of dark. And I think that's a really fun way for us all to celebrate the solstice is to acknowledge the dark and to welcome the light. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and making a blanket for it and playing with a flashlight and listening to some great music and hearing colors. That's what we know now. We can hear colors. My thanks to the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria for the invitation to join you for Family Sunday this year and share some of my musical insights about color, a world that we can both inhabit. Happy solstice to all of you and happy holidays. May you be safe and may you be well. My name is Rebecca Haas. I'm from Pacific Opera Victoria, and I really look forward to seeing you again in the future.